Hey everybody, I just wanted to um, cover something with you today about the concept of how to use your legs in different facets, right? So I heard a great quote the other day um, from a chef actually, he said that we're in the era of refinement and not of invention. And I think pretty much the same goes in the horsemanship game, you know, over hundreds and hundreds of years, nearly every technique or concept or something has been explored. But hopefully uh, what I can do today is maybe show you something you've done before, but give it a little bit more context, maybe give it a little bit more concept. So when I'm thinking about using my legs, I try to separate my legs into two major elements. Is does my leg mean relax in this context? And then does it mean respond in this context? So what I just thought we'd start with is the relaxed leg. Okay, so this horse here is very sensitive and he's really quite impulsive by nature. And... Before, when you put your leg on him, you just automatically just used to think accelerate. It just meant go, which caused him to bring his head up and become a bit bracy and impulsive. So I taught him this concept called the relaxed leg. So basically, my relaxed leg is if I've got no intent in my body, okay, and my butt cheeks are loose and my pelvis is um, not engaged, if I just squeeze, with my, squeeze my horses from my knees down all the way into my spurs, and I hold it there until I feel them not think forward, but start to just relax like he did there. I take my leg off. Okay, so there he's processing a bit. So the relaxed leg is imagining like I'm giving him a hug with my feet. People go, doesn't this confuse them and make them want to just go more because the leg means go? Well, when you girth a horse up, they don't take off and gallop off when they get bound by the tension of the girth because we've taught them that the girth is a neutral thing. So what if we taught them that our legs could be a neutral thing? So if he felt like I was giving him, giving him a hug, he just started to soften his body and relax when he felt that leg. So here's how I taught it. Stage one, or part number one, is that when I put my leg on, I want my horse just to relax. So if you put your leg on a horse and it starts to wanna to go forward and backward and feel like the leg means go, then you would just gently pick up a bit of contact and you'd try to prevent forward and you'd hold your leg there and hold your leg there and then the horse might stand still but he sways around and goes back and forward because he still thinks the leg is active and you'd hold it there and stay really relaxed in your butt and there's a point where all of a sudden the horses start to stand still and they find a little moment of relaxation. You watch here, I'll just see if I can squeeze him with my legs. He's exploring. As soon as he starts to there, he relaxes, I soften my hands and I take my leg off. So stage one is just relax. Stage two would, once the horse has learned that that leg means relax, it would mean relax and drop your pole. So let's see if I can, with squeezing with my legs, and keep him straight with my reins, see if I can get him to put his pole down, right? So I'm really starting to squeeze and go, where is the release? Where's the release here, Shogun? All right, he's not really looking, so I'm going to bring my reins in and support. And then as he starts to drop his head, he's still not quite gone down there, I might let go with my legs. Okay, so he's a little bit distracted there. Squeeze with my leg. That was a really good one. Squeeze with my leg, see if he'll soften his pole. Yes. So that would be stage two. It's starting to teach a horse that every time they feel the leg, they relax, then they soften their pole. Stage three would be, could I get them that when I squeeze them with my leg, that they soften their pole down. And then I started teaching them that if they tuck their nose onto the vertical and I soften my hands and he could hold his nose on the vertical with a, for a moment or two with my legs on. So here he's starting to think that I want him to back. So I just ask him forward, don't go backwards. And when he finds that moment where he can hold that flexion without rain contact, I'd back my leg off. So that's the relaxed leg. Because if I start teaching him the behavior associated with that relaxed leg is relax, then when I become active to go into a departure, the horses are going to think the behavior is relax, soften your pole, tuck your chin, then trot. Soften your pole, tuck your chin, then canter. So I start teaching them that every time they feel the leg, they associate relaxation with the leg before they associate it with response. So that's how I would start the relaxed leg. Now the next part which people struggle a bit to change is then going, right, if I put my relaxed leg on and my horse softens, 
Say then I gather up my reins. Then if I tilt my pelvis and lift my energy up, now my leg is an active thing. Now I've got the responsive leg. So it's not more squeeze. What it is now is adding more intent to your body. So if I go relax leg, so my legs are squeezing him, getting him to relax. Then I sit up and I squeeze my butt cheeks together. Now my leg should mean get going. Okay, relax leg. Now draw my belly button back, increase my intent and see if he can tell now that I actually want him to respond to something. So when I'm using my relaxed leg, I'm just squeezing from my knees down. When I'm using my responsive leg, I engage my glutes, I open my pelvis slightly and then my whole leg now becomes involved for a departure. Okay, so hear that? Big relaxation. So he's starting now to learn this horse, the difference between when the leg means just relax and when it means respond, okay? One of the big confusions people will have is going, well, now my horse has learned to get dull to the leg. That's only because you haven't released on when you're trying to reward relaxed behavior. So if you just put your leg on and you don't have any intent of I want you to relax, then the horse just gets dull to your leg. And then when you turn your energy on and try to get them to become active, they're now non-responsive. So my, I'm always trying to respond on either relaxation or responsiveness. And I want to avoid rewarding dullness or reactiveness. So if you've got a horse that's reactive to your leg, you need to do more relaxed leg concepts. And if your horse is um, dull to your leg, when you become active, and they're not responsive, don't use more leg, ride with a little stick or a string or something and tap them along. And when they get going, then release your leg. So here's what I might play with. Relax leg, get them relaxed. Then bring my intent up, responsive leg to trot, relax leg in the trot. And when he starts to relax, back my leg off. So I should be able to trot, jog along, and squeeze my horse with my legs and then not see there he wanted to get faster he wanted to go a little bit quicker so I'd keep my relaxed leg on wait till he felt relaxed and soft to my leg let the rain go keep my leg on now take my leg off so he starts associating that leg with relaxation before response now what if I went relax leg whoop he got a bit tight so hold wait till he's relaxed and then soften my body and make the response to go backward. So I'm reiterating that every time he feels my leg, he thinks relax and then respond, not react and then respond. Okay. So relax leg, wait till he's relaxed and then increase my intent and see if I can get a candid departure. But it's most important that the horse relaxes to the leg before they respond. So if I don't have relaxation, don't activate your seat. Keep your leg on there until the horse starts to soften. So what if I put my inside leg on, just my left leg, and said relax around my inside leg. So he started to bend, drop his pole, then I release my leg. Relax to my inside leg, sit up take my weight to the outside and now he leg yields off that leg because he knows that the leg just changed from a relaxed leg to a responsive leg. All right, relaxed leg. So I want him to just shape around the inside leg. Bring my life up, shift my weight to the outside and now he should leg yield away from that leg because it's now become a responsive leg. Relaxed leg. So he's a bit worried about the wind today, this horse. So this is where I would use my relaxed leg until I felt his ears and his mind like come back to me and not worry about his environment and then let my leg off. And as you can see, I'm still needing a little bit of rain support, but as he gets better, I should be able to just put my leg on and really squeeze my leg. See there he thought the leg meant active because his adrenaline's up a bit. So I'm gonna sustain the relaxed leg, sustain the relaxed leg, Really squeeze him with my spurs, don't trot. That's where I just check him and go, you're feeling like the leg means go. I want you to feel like the leg means relax. 
Back my reins off. Wait till he thinks relax. He's thinking go. It's because his adrenaline's up. This is exactly why I would use the leg in this situation. Is when he gets a bit bothered, add more pressure. And when he gets more relaxed, there we go. Take the pressure away. Very, very sensitive emotionally, this horse to change, to teaching pressure, to social pressure. So the more I can teach him that him not fearing the leg and relaxing to the leg, the more leg I can put on knowing that it's not going to create brace and or it's not going to create reaction. Now he feels better to the leg. So when I push with my left leg, his pole should come down and his nose should come in, but he shouldn't leg yield away until I sit up and activate a leg. And now he can tell that the leg is on versus just relax. It's like the difference between an electric fence. The fence doesn't move. It doesn't change position, but it either has a current going through it or it doesn't. And horses can tell when the fence is on and they can sure as heck tell when the fence is off. So if I teach him that when I put my relaxed leg on, the fence is off, you can just relax and you can sustain that pressure. But if I turn my energy on, now the fence is on and he can move over. I hope I just said that the right way around. If I've got my relaxed leg on, the fence is off. And when I've got my responsive leg on, the fence is on. Okay. So if you've got a horse that's not great with your legs, don't use less leg. Teach them that the behavior of the leg pressure can make them feel more relaxed and more secure. And the more confident they get with the relaxed leg, the smoother it is when you apply a responsive leg. Now he's trotting a little bit short and a little bit shallow because we're in this round pen here. But if I opened up, I should be able to I can get him to trot more. And if he's at any point a little bracy in my hands, it's because he's not relaxed in the rib. So if I add leg, 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 he bridles up more without needing to do in my hands. So it starts really being the basis for all of your communication with your feet. I'm going to change my bend with my other leg. Get him to relax. So one last thing here, right? Relax leg. So I've got no rein pressure and I've got lots of leg pressure. If they go to quicken, just give them a little half halt. Wait till they're relaxed with your leg. Then responsive leg to trot. Keep your relaxed leg on. Keep your relaxed leg on. Keep your relaxed leg on. When they relax and are trotting, take your leg off. Now relax leg on. Get him soft. So he's thinking canter. So now I'm going to soften my intent down to the walk. Wait till he relaxes. So he's a little bracy. He's still a little bit bracy. Keep my relaxed leg on. Then when he relaxes, I take the rein pressure and the leg pressure off. Before you know it, every time you put your leg on, you'll have a horse start to soften and think about relaxing through their intent, preparing their body, then departing. You'll get a lower pole. You'll get a more drawn up wither. And you'll just generally feel like there's less anxiety around transitions, turnarounds, and building the horse's confidence to understand that pressure is information and not punishment. I hope that helps you.